continuing and uh, uh, okay I'm just going to make sure everything's on, I'm going okay and um, now we're going to move in from the the issues remember if you started in a maybe you turned can't take it and, and, and couldn't take all this stuff but we we said okay here's the first thing we need to understand is just the kind of the tax rules and a little bit of the balance sheet and now we're going to move into the implication of inside and outside basis tax leverage distributions of cash flows this difference between itc and ptc perhaps i should have uh, 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 rearranged that a little bit and why yield flips are used so so we're going to go through some of those issues now and i'm going to do the same kind of thing if you haven't watched the first video don't worry too much whatever i don't know uh uh, uh <laughs> if you fell asleep doing it i would understand uh, uh um so we've 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 been through these issues and 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 kind of the good news now now that the thing I'm going to do a little bit is is also work through some of the financing issues a, 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 a little bit differently. Okay, now we're to the allocations. Now, again, I'm gonna go crazy. Sorry about this, but when somebody says, "Oh, I'm from Rockwood," and I because he I can say that because he never paid me for doing all this work. I Oh, I know how the tax equity works, and it you can only put ninety nine percent in for five years. Not you can't have ninety nine and then go down, or 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 you can't do this structure versus this structure. There are limits. There are limits because the IRS doesn't want you to have a bare transfer of the tax benefits. But now we're going to take this this the this this understanding of our rule and we're going to put what kind of whether we have a preferred uh, 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 distribution how we're going to distribute the cash flow and the income and, and for me when i first started looking at this and i'm assuming that some of you are just getting started with this this whole business of uh, uh the, the, this whole business of distributing income on one basis and dividends on another basis was was a little bit confusing to me uh, but in any partnership you can certainly distribute dividends however you want I should admit this I have oh, I have a personal problem with a house with my apartment here whatever it's a condo I bought it and well, now should I say this? A personal situation. Somebody bought it with me, a lady, and she moved out because she couldn't take my Excel within a couple of weeks. She took all the titles to the house, and so now we have a partnership. She's never put one one penny into the house, but she owns certain percentage of the house. Oh, the, well, the apartment, whatever it is. Uh, uh, whatever I'm just trying to say that the structure of the cash flow and the structure of the ownership can be different now the income is is more like the ownership so if you if you earn some book income which is the tax depreciation you can distribute that on one basis and distribute the cash flow on the other basis enough of that and the irs the tax authority cannot tell you oh you're not allowed to make a, a partnership where you where you 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 uh, uh, share certain things to one partner and certain they can't tell you anything about how to make a partnership but they can tell you <clears throat> if you make it too aggressively and the you you just it's a bare transfer of, of tax benefits, meaning that you, you, you just take all the tax benefits and give them to one party and you just keep all the cash flow to another party, that you're not allowed to do that. That would be too dangerous. Can you imagine everybody would do this? Everybody who has a high tax bracket would take all the deductions and everybody who has low and the 
IRS would lose a whole bunch of the tax would would lose a whole bunch of money. So that that's it. Now, but you can structure these in all different ways, and anybody who who says, "Oh, I can't do it this way or that way," is is just a bunch of it's horrible. Okay. Now, what we need to do is understand uh, uh, the implications of uh, uh, of of different structuring. And what I suggest, and I, what I suggested before. This is just a suggestion. Now, the, the, the first thing is that, again, for all you Excel bureaucrats, you uh, stop being a bureaucrat, the uh, Excel technocrat. Put the distribution of the partnership after you've computed the tax rules put the distribution of the partnership in a separate sheet or a separate area of the model. So here in our detailed model, we then put the quarterly allocation. So we have some sort of allocation of this partnership and, and, and we put all, what I suggest is you put all of the Oh God, I'm just remembering this guy from. Uh, uh, I I did this carefully structured model, and then he he, he took it and and he <laughs> ruined it. Oh God, because I you you just if if you're unstructured with this, and I'm not a structured person in my life, I assure you, you can tell from the videos. But when you're making this, put all the partnership parameters as separate inputs. And in this case, the big the big deal is, and you can express this in, in solar, there's something you could call a contribution ratio, but don't be intimidated by silly things like this. 1.24 means I'm paying 24%. I'm investing 24% more than the ITC itself. So you figure out the fair market value, figure out what the ITC is, and and then and and then you can uh, 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 you you get twenty four percent more whatever and 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 that's how much you put in as as a percentage of the EPC cost which is pretty good okay and you can measure it different ways don't think there's some rule please uh, the rule's just driving me nuts okay and then this tax equity might put their money in not all just at the ITC date they could put it in at different periods and then. You have some allocations pre and post flip, and they can be all complicated. In fact, this is something I, I didn't really think about in our simple model. So you can see I'm switching between our simple model and our, 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 our more complicated model. Uh, the, in, in, our, in our simple model, the... the uh, okay, the <laughs> we work through the taxes, we work through the balance sheet, and now we're to the allocation. And in the allocation, I made different scenarios. In the first scenario, you go in the first two years, you get 99% of the income, not the cash flow. This is the second scenario. This is the third scenario. So you, oh, shoot, what's going on here? Oh, God, just, just a minute. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's stupid. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I, I've got to pause this for a minute. Okay. Uh, uh, the the uh, we th this is our scenario one two three. How about if I put one two three four five? Now I've got to remember to to so we can have one where we have no tax equity. That's what this means. I don't know why I put two of them. And you know if you have something like this. What you can do is, is go to the home, and uh, uh, I, I, I like to, to do this, and I do it too much, and you go to conditional formatting and new rule, and when you put, uh, uh, 
put this in, you click on this number that's fixed, and you make it equal to one of these numbers, and you start with the top left, and you press the F4, and that keeps it on that row, and then you put a format in, and you uh, put the fill, and let's make it something like this, okay? Uh, uh, all right, and... Um, Very good. Okay, so uh, uh, <sighs> there. So let's put it to scenario one. I'm not going to waste a lot of time with this. So that this way you have 99% of the income, and that means that depreciation, if you care about it, it's not very important. Is distributed 99% that the, the tax basis that will be distributed at 99%. And then you can put in different shares of, you can put in a preferred yield, which I, I it's a little bit irritating to have a preferred yield. That means the tax investor doesn't take any production tax risk on the cash flow. They get a flat cash flow. How, and, 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 and they're, they're going to argue, well, that cash flow is cash flow. We're taking some risks in the project because I suppose it's possible not to get that cash flow. Or you can distribute it with different pre-flip and post-flip periods. Now, I, didn't, I wasn't clear enough on this. this these pre and flip post, they, you can change the times whenever you want, and you can change the cash flow whenever you want, Okay. So you get a certain percentage of the income, which gives you a tax deduction, and then you get a certain percentage of the uh, 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 cash flow. And when you do that, either in the big fancy model or in this model, we, uh, 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 we get a cash flow allocation. And right now, oh, look, the tax equity is getting, because they get, uh, 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 we're doing the, the tax equity and we're doing this after tax and we're doing the sponsor or developers, I call it sponsor down there, pre-tax. Oh, look, they get 31%. That was greedy. That was greedy. Idiot. That was there. That's unfair. And we go, only got 7%. The interesting thing when we did this is that it seems like you're you're, you're doing something magic because when you compute the after-tax cash flow here, it's only 6.99%, and somehow both of our partners are getting more. Both of our partners are, 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 are getting more. How does that occur? Well, that occurs because this is pre-tax, and this is after-tax. If they're both after-tax, this, this after-tax would be less because this poor partner is after you've got positive income, you start paying all the taxes on the positive income. Okay, and I, I, I hope I did that all correct. So you get you you just put your cash flows. You have a, a separate sheet that just works through the allocations. It's really on a time-based flip. It's really really not very difficult. Okay, but that's meaningless. This IRR is essentially meaningless, and we'll explain that because this IRR, uh, uh, this IRR assumes that all of these tax losses that you get, and 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 these I express this as a positive. All of these, so so we're putting in uh, three hundred and ninety whatever, million, billion, trillion, whatever, or just dollars, okay, or whatever, pounds, but it's mainly dollars in this case. And then we're getting all of these positive, because we have a big tax depreciation, we're getting, this is multiplied by the tax rate already, the, the loss multiplied by the tax rate gives us 100, 118 back. I'm, of course, not doing this in present value, uh, 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 but that's what you get back now. If so, if you stopped here, it would look really good. It would be better to stop and just put a, a, a flip of, of five years. This is the should have told you. We're just going to put a flip of five years there. 
then we're getting 107 and that's that's our income we're getting back that's our, our cash flow we're getting back and we're getting some preferred yield up there we're getting some pure cash flow we're getting the taxes back we get all our ITC back and, and this pure cash flow plus the the tax benefit these are what you're really doing in terms of measuring that contribution ratio this is the extra you get over and above the ITC okay that's how you can think about it and it's all wrong because we haven't put any limits on this absorption but you can you can get the the general idea in this case we ignore taxes because we say that this sponsor or developer has this enormous net operating loss tax carry for it and invested in a bunch of stuff or it's a subsidiary of some big corporation like Amazon who doesn't pay taxes or Apple, I don't know if they pay taxes or blah, 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 all those other corporations who don't pay taxes. So I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. They, 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 so you have a, somebody who doesn't pay taxes, you're going to ignore, just, just forget all the taxes. And then, so you just get some cash flow. You put in, we haven't put any back leverage in yet, and you put in your money, and then you get your cash flow, and that's your IRR. Okay? And that's it. Now, now what I realize now I should have done up here is, and I'm, I'm almost thinking about doing something here just just one minute let me let me just uh, uh, break this for a minute uh, I'll pause this okay uh, am I uh, recording let me see yes okay uh, I am now I, I took a long break but I modified the website okay you can see I've got this crap over here uh, now we're going to talk about the inside basis and the outside basis. Uh, uh, and I'll call it with absorption uh, problems. Uh, we can, uh, uh, I think there's a, a accounting called, term called Nova Gradix who calls it stranded taxes, whatever you call it. Just try to be as fancy as you possibly can. I'm going to, make another video about this fight I'm having about cost of capital with a utility company in Exelon, and I'm going to show you just how crap they are with their little fancy language. Oh, my God. Uh, so now, uh, here's how I started this. Imagine you're working for the tax authority. Oh, you've got a little, whatever, one of those, those little hats with the visors on or whatever. Imagine you're one of these accountants. I should uh, make a picture of that. And you have to come up with a way to make sure this is not a bare transfer of tax uh, 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 benefits, okay? What can you do? Well, you could compute some fancy IRRs. You could look at betas, maybe. You could look at value or risk. Oh, what a bunch of shit. Sorry, crap. Sorry. What you'll probably do is look at a balance sheet. Ah, we can compute a balance sheet. We're going to make them compute a balance sheet in a certain way. And if that equity balance on the balance sheet of a partner goes negative, you're going to say, aha, here's what that means. You have taken out more money than you've put in. And somehow, because you've taken out more money than you've put in, and a lot of that money that is used to reduce the capital on your your balance sheet comes from these big depreciation deductions that means that you've not really made a true investment in the project and as soon as that whatever that logic is a little bit questionable but you're whatever you're doing how can you come up with the perfect rule when you make this rule it's whatever i mean it's as logical as i i, I can think about uh, uh, when you make this rule, uh, uh, then phew, uh, 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 <laughs> I lost my train of thought a little bit, but whatever. Uh, 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 you're going to say, well, when the capital goes negative, 
here's what we're going to do with that negative capital on your on, on your equity accounts for your your partnership we're going to call that taxable income ha <laughs> ha okay but you know when you're a tax authority just think about this you're going to say ah uh, okay you can compute the balance sheet kind of using your own accounting methods and you put the fair value in in, in the accounting and you put the even though it's called book basis you, you you put all the tax depreciation and everything else in there ah, but you can fiddle around with that and you can move uh, uh, items from one partner to another when you do that you might have to call it a, a, a something called a deficit reduction obligation so you as the tax equity partner have a negative capital we'll look at it just in a, in a minute and when you have a negative uh, 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 capital balance you're gonna get capital from the other partner you're not gonna get money Ooh, I was on a phone call and this big tax equity expert who got a lawyer so, oh we're gonna pay the DRO it's not money it's just moving stuff from one balance sheet to the other and then if you can do that trick well then you won't have a problem but there is a little bit of a problem with it if this company goes bankrupt and you have a deficit reduction obligation then if you have for example if you're the tax equity partner and you've used some of this tax this deficit reduction obligation and it's moved from one partner to another you have to pay tax on that so there's a little bit of a liability if you go bankrupt so the the banks can get very worried about something like this okay now uh, uh, when we compute this equity capital so we're gonna the IRS is gonna do it two ways they're gonna let you do whatever you want kind of mess around with this DRO and all that stuff but then they're going to have something called an outside basis, and that's going to be much more specific. They say exactly how you're supposed to compute that, and they don't give you any flexibility. And so even if you're outside, if you can play games with the inside basis, you won't be able to do that with the outside basis. So when you're making a model, oh my gosh, you have to compute two. Now, if this is the first time you've seen this, you can go crazy with this, absolutely crazy. But when you step back and think about that poor man at the IRS who's going or woman who's, who's going to do it, well, okay. So here's an example of the inside basis. What you do is you compute an equity account just like you would with anything else, and you you uh, add the paid-in capital. Well, I could call this paid-in capital. You add the income just like you do for retained earnings. You take a dividend away. And then you have to include this famous basis adjustment if you're in the on the tax equity side. The gain on the sale of the asset that goes to the the, the other people. You don't a tax equity person doesn't pay that that, that gain. Or at least I assume they don't. Okay. Mm. And then uh oh, we compute a subtotal. And don't be afraid to compute a subtotal right on the 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 the, the balance sheet. And this opening balance goes all the way down to after the subtotal, not to before the subtotal. And what you can do is you can move equity capital from down below, uh, 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 from the, 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 the sponsor or developer balance sheet. This equity... Uh, 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 so, so it's it's an equity capital account. You cannot compute a whole balance sheet. I, I, I went crazy. You can't do your three statement modeling really, because you'd have to allocate all that stuff on the balance sheet, and it would get a little bit crazy. You just do it with the equity capital, not the whole balance sheet. And this thirty percent IRR. Now, if you what happens then is this amount here this negative amount that gets reallocated okay and, and what the reallocation means is that this negative income goes down to the sponsor and you have to pay call that taxable income and then you thought you get this is the first year you take a big tax uh, deduction and by the third year it goes to negative and 
uh, uh, your negative shield on income becomes this. And in the next year, you've got the same thing and you end up uh, 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 mechanically paying a little tax is not getting the tax deduction. So up here, when we do your taxes, your, your taxes used to, right now, they give you a little bit of positive cash flow. But if we go up here, if we didn't have this constraint, our taxes used to give us uh, 107 cash flow. Now they only give you uh, 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 how much is this? I uh, can't see this. 39. Is, is that right? 39 cash flow. I, you, you know, my eyes are. Oh, shit. I hope I can continue this. I hope I can continue making videos and not have to give up my life uh, uh, and live a boring old retired life. Oh, God. Uh, uh, so the IRR dramatically drops. Oh, my gosh. And you can see you're playing with kind of small little items because you put in all your money. You're getting most of it back through the ITC. So it's this remainder of stuff that really affects the the the. Uh, uh, the IRR, okay? So that's what happens to the, uh, 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 that's called the inside basis. We make a subtotal. All the formulas, if you have complicated formulas, it would be disgusting. Again, the most disgusting thing is using H lookup still and, and making these formulas long. Even my own client does it. I hate it. Why can't they just use X lookup? You can use X lookup. Forget match index. Forget it all. It's only X lookup. Now, if so, I, I got to go up here. This is again in our in in our simple case. Now that we're going to use, we're going to look at the outside basis in a minute, but in 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 the simple case these are all one 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 nothing fancy we get to the sum a subtotal and then we just use a maximum and if it's you you switch it from a negative to a positive and then and then uh i forgot oh, oh this one i i either put it in or, or didn't for the reallocation of income and, and, and then uh, uh we can get it from the other balance sheet i didn't bother to put that in right now and uh uh, then all of these formulas I'm just showing you are, are, are really simple. And then you go and do the same thing for the, I call it the balance sheet, and I should, uh, I need to rename this as the equity capital. We can't do a whole balance sheet. And then uh, 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 for the equity balance, for the sponsor, I don't know why I left this stuff in, but it's the same sort of thing. Notice that the closing balance is always positive because we put our income in. We get a much smaller basis differential because the basis differential is 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 computed from the kind of the the, the, the tax depreciation. Uh, uh, you, I included the gain on the uh, uh, fair market value. Our income is 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 still negative, but it's a tiny little negative number. Even though we pay a bigger dividend, we keep a positive uh, a balance. And then this for me is is a big deal. The uh, 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 partnership itself. If you go up to the partnership itself, that's our yellow. Remember, that's our yellow bubble or oval or whatever. There's our three statement financial model. And in the partnership itself, you have the closing balance of the equity. Same sort of thing. And then what you're doing is you're allocating that to the two partners. This was the, here was the tax investor with a negative. We haven't allocated it yet. And, and, and then the developer sponsor. And here's the total of the two equity capitals, and this is the equity capital below, okay? And so that's the inside basis. But that's not really where the action is. The action is down here. I suppose what I could do is I'm going to update this and put it on the preview mode in, in 
whatever this is, is, uh, what do you call this, WordPress? Okay. Uh, uh, then, uh, I can't even remember that. So we, we're, we're down here, and we're going to go point by point, and we've got all the stuff I talked about before, and we've got our diagrams, and we just talked about the inside basis, and now we talk about really where the action is, and that's the outside basis. Okay, and in the outside basis, the IRS comes and says, okay, you do whatever you want with that balance sheet and make your little DRO account and all that stuff, but we want you to compute a balance sheet according to our specific prescription, and we're going to make you compute this balance sheet where... Uh, 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 we're going to have some very specific tests, and that's for sur excess, I call it excess dividends and and uh, 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 suspended loss. And what happens here is that you make an out, it, it, when you make an outside basis account, it kind of looks the same, but you only put positive income here. Again, this is, I, this is, for me, really difficult to kind of understand because you get a closing balance that includes the, the negative income somewhere down here, okay? And then you make the opening balance equal to the closing balance. So this opening balance includes the effect of the negative income, but you make this little test. And the first test is you, you, you compute a subtotal of the, you only add the positive income, and if this subtotal is negative, and you put the dividends up here, you, it's all the equity account. If it's negative, then you say, ah, you got, you paid out more dividends than you put in. It's kind of an arbitrary test, and it's kind of an idiotic way to do it. But whatever, it's I, I, I shouldn't have said idiotic. It's not. I can't. I can't. I, I, you, you can understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to say if you pay more dividends than you, the money you put in, you've you've taken it all out in dividends, and you don't have any real investment in the project, so you don't get any more tax benefits. So this 6.35, which is just the dividends, that is counted as taxable income, and that doesn't ever get to change. But then you keep going. Okay, and you put the 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 subtotal, and then you put the negative here, and then you compute a second subtotal, and then you use your maximum and minimum and all that. And if this is positive right here, if this is positive, you, it's like an NOL. You don't get this. The total closing balance at, at, at the very end has to be negative. I gotta adjust this. Ooh, I shouldn't have seen that, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna. Leave it. I'm gonna have to pause. <laughs> Shoot, I'm gonna have to pause this. Uh, 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 less use of suspended loss. Uh, I think I have to add that or something. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, I can't do that right now. I'm gonna do that later. But sorry, this should always be negative, and we should make an adjustment. Ooh, I gotta fix that. Okay, and that's just for the balance sheet. But then when our suspended loss, now I got all, all confused and all, all screwed up. When we compute our balance of the suspended loss, it's like an NOL with a maximum and minimum. I put it just below the balance sheet. And the good news is if you have the suspended loss, you get to deduct it later. And the other thing you can do is you can see, oh, this, this problem all occurs here. So why are we going to allocate a bunch of income to our, our, our tax equity investor after that second year when we're going to have a loss anyway. It's better to give it to the developer, and the developer might be in a position of actually having to pay taxes, and that might benefit the developer. Now, once you do all of that and, and, and put those two things in, remember that surplus dividends is a, is, is a, a, a uh, permanent. You don't get to get that back. But the bigger item is the suspended loss, and you get to get that back. So when you do this, now the IRR isn't all that bad. I should have put the sums here. Oh, gosh, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that too. Okay, but now the IRR is 9%. I, I did change the, 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 the 
the operation period. And I hope what you're seeing now is that there are different kind of ways to allocate income. And if you see a, 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 a time-based flip that has a longer than five years and you're saying, why would I flip? Why don't I just flip it in the five-year MACRS period? I hope you're seeing why you might not do it that way. Okay. And, and so that's the outside basis. And now I'm going to just continue. And now we can start playing with things. Okay. And, and we can start to exactly the sort of issues I was just talking about with the, with the, 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 what happens if you make the time base flip longer, what happens if you put more preferred yield into the tax investor or oh, blah, 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 blah. Now here's where I go nuts about technocrats, bureaucrats, spreadsheet, whatever people who don't think and who are going to say, Oh, you're not allowed to put a spinner box in there. But before we do that, the other thing, technocratic thing to do is, oh, you can only compute the developer IRR on a pre-tax basis because some rule says that. What a lot of crap. And you don't even present it. You can compute, present the developer IRR and, and, and the, 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 the sponsor IRR however you want. So here's my suggestion. I didn't put the bubbles in, okay? I didn't put the, 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 the bubbles in like this, but we can do the same thing. We can put these IRRs kind of at the top, start with the pre-tax IRR, go to the hypothetical after-tax IRR, put the tax investor IRRs, put the developer IRRs, do this on a pre-tax basis, after-tax or with an NOL, do this, show the effect of these absorption issues or these stranded taxes down here with all the financing we'll put that in 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 later on we'll, we'll we'll do that later on but but i argue again take away this bureaucratic stuff you're being drilled into your head take that away and present it here so we've got the llc partners up up here we put some spinner boxes we can put higher irrs higher different write-ups i don't know why the write-up is so small here uh uh uh, uh put different timings in, put different income allocation scenarios in, put different preferred allocations in, put how much you're contributing this one and this one to the total. Maybe I should have put the total CapEx up here. Uh, uh, and then you can put the IRRs with and without the absorption and the, the developer, the sponsor IRRs with and without different tax treatments. And then you can play with things. And that's, after all, really why you've, why you've almost uh, 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 made the model. Now uh, I have to just check what's our timeline. Oh, it's only 38 minutes. Oh, good. I'm going to uh, put the yield base flip in, in, in here. But before I do that, let's go back to our, again, our simple model. I hope you're seeing I illustrate how you should make a, a, a complicated model. Now, in a, in a summary, here, here's our summary page. Uh, uh, if we uh, 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 if we if we had our big fancy complicated model, not so complicated model. I haven't filled in all the stuff here. But we can put the IRRs and we can use alternative measures to IRRs. And we can put this here. I, I added the ones with, with leverage here, but, but maybe we, uh, maybe that's getting too confusing. Maybe we, we want to do one summary page without any gearing or leverage and put a few of the statistics there. And I would suggest even putting some of the little boxes the little spinner boxes in this one. Okay. And that's what I did here as well. Okay. I just, I don't see how you can uh, do this now. I think in, there, there are two kind of models these days. There's the U S models, which have this horrible page where they mix up the inputs, put some of the inputs kind of on a page like this. And there there's the 
highly bureaucratic kind of other models that, that don't let you do any of this stuff. They're both horrible. You can put a reset button here if you if you don't like the spinner boxes. I didn't bother to do that. Okay. Now let let's just illustrate. So right now we have the sponsor, and we don't know if we're paying taxes or not. Let's say we're we're paying taxes. Right now it's the NOL and not paying taxes is the same. So this this doesn't do any good. So what we could do is we could make the, the tax investor put a little more money in. Oh, but that kills the IRI almost. What did I do here? I had it go by four. Maybe, maybe we, had, we should just have it go by one instead. Okay, because it's very sensitive to that. Thing. So let's just put a little bit more in. Now, when we put more in, you can see this is going down. This is going up. This is not going up enough. And what happens if we increase the fair market value right up? Well, I, I put that by 10%. Then the, the, the hypothetical IRR is going up. Uh, uh, whoops. And, and the, whoops, I didn't mean to change the, uh, uh, the, that one. I wanted to change the, let's put a, a higher uh, fair market value right up so 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 this is making sense okay and i i think we're getting a higher amount here but but actually after the absorption it's it's not so good but okay we're getting some of these and now it kind of almost makes more sense this is a little bit lower than than the 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 optimal case now what you, we can do is we can change this scenario and if we if we change this scenario with the absorption, what should happen is notice that the after-tax IRR to the developer is changing. We could also uh, 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 let's change the 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 whoops. I, I, I wanted to change the preferred yield. Okay, let's give them a little. Ah, we gave them too much. Let's have them put some more. Uh, uh, contribution in okay maybe that's that's a fair number for for them and then let's see what happens if we make this longer then here's why it's going up if we make this longer it's actually this surprising kind of result is is that the 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 uh, and maybe that's uh, i've got some other things here too but 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 what happens is we we have that ability to use the, the 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 stranded loss so now we can have them put even more in push it down and you'd have to look at all this carefully obviously i i hope you're getting that the key point is now you can use the model that's what you're doing you're trying to structure this partnership transaction and for somebody like my friend, what's his name, Scott or something at Rockwood, who said, oh, no, 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 you got to use it this way. This is the rule. That's not a rule. You sit there and, and, and you get creative and you play with different parameters and you make sure that you got all the mechanics of the model right, of course. Uh, but that's that. Okay. And, and I think when I, I, I increased the fair market value, got it. If we could get a higher ITC, then we're really doing well but I, I, I gotta see if I did something wrong here I'm not sure okay I didn't say that but I did okay now let's go let's move from solar to wind and hydrogen and when we move to the production tax credit we have production risk and we, we, we did a lot of analysis just now about absorption, and that was certainly complicated enough. But, but the, we didn't have to take any big risks, really, about the, the, the production. Maybe there were some. I, I, I shouldn't say that. If we go here and we start changing our EBITDA, I'm looking at this. This does not change. This is going to increase the the IR to the developer a lot, but it's not going to in, it's not going to change this that much. Okay, that's because it's all preferred yield and everything is structured. Okay, but 
if it's a a a uh, if it's a production tax credit, then the 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 the, the the risks we take associated with the production are a really big deal, and so what you could try to do is 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 use a, a, a flip where instead of you flip based on a given time frame, you flip based on making an IRR. So if the production is lower than you thought it would be, and the tax equity demands something like a seven percent after-tax IRR, which is enormous. Uh, uh, then can you imagine Morgan Stanley or something making a 7% after-tax IRR on a loan? Oh, my God. Okay. But, okay, they okay. now they're saying, oh, we take production tax credit risk. Now, when you model, so, so, so we're going to have one allocation of cash flow and or income based on the, 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 uh, 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 the cash, uh, I'm sorry, uh, before we hit our target IRR and a different allocation after we reach our ta target IRR. And that protects the tax investors for having to take a bunch of production risk because if the production is lower than expected, well, you just keep going out and out and out until you eventually get there. So you get a higher percentage of cash flow Income is a little bit trickier, but you get a higher percentage of cash flow until you get there up. Oh! And then after the uh, 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 you hit your yield, then you get a lower percentage of cash flow. Now to illustrate, now, now, now to make this work, you can do you can use something called a tracking account. And the way a tracking account works is is you uh, 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 with, with with a tracking account, it's almost like a if if you imagine a sometimes a shareholder loan works like this, where you have a interest that you're not paying but you're capitalizing. So that makes the balance of the loan go up, but you're getting paid based on a cash flow sweep. And when you get paid, that cash flow sweep is going to go on and on and on until we've paid off the debt. Once we've paid off the debt, we're finished. Bloop. Okay, that debt is gone. But that's like the, the first part of the senior, let's call the tax equity senior, that's like the first part of the tax equity. So you set, I did a, a really, really simple example of this. Okay, and again, this is in that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll go to this sheet. Okay, and uh, 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 in, in the, where do I have it? I just basic flip. Okay, here and let's uh, I'll leave this at this size. Okay, we we have a target IRR. Whoops, what's going on here? We have a target IRR and 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 then we put some capex and some EBITDA and we get an IRR, just a regular old IRR of ten percent. Okay, and then we're going to split it. We're going to do a really, really extreme split. We're going to split it until we hit 7%, but we're going to give 30% of, of the cash flow to the senior or the tax equity investor, if you want to put it like that. And the tax equity investor only invests 20%. So what you do is they get all of the cash flow no, 30% of the cash flow until they get a 7% income. And, and so what happens is you get you get 30 out of the 130, but this time, this is the big key, you only get 21. And the way you do this is you make an opening balance, like an opening balance of a of, of a of, of a shareholder loan with a payment in kind. You accrue cost of capital, you don't have to call it interest. That's just on the opening balance. You just take that opening balance uh, uh, and multiply. Now, the opening balance is going down because we're paying dividends. That's like the loan balance going up. Here are the dividends you're paying. It's almost like an equity account, but it's not. And then you get your closing balance. And once you've paid it off, and, and the big thing here is to use a minimum function, a minimum function of the cash you received 
or the opening balance plus the uh, amount of accrued interest or accrued cost of capital. And then you prove that it works. You say, okay, let's see it works. That really works. And then the, the rest of the investor gets uh, 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 what's left over. So in this, in this period, he, he, he gets the 100 minus the amount we've paid, the 24. He gets 80. Uh, 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 no. Yes. And, and then after the flip, what, what, what am I doing here? This is uh, the the pre-flip. Uh, uh, oh, okay. This this is I did it wrong. This is the amount of cash flow you get, and I uh, post-flip cash flow is is this. Uh, I, I'm I'm sorry. The, this post-flip cash flow. Look, I've I've, I've done this wrong. The post-flip cash flow is simply the in this case, it's so much simpler. It's the 100 minus. Oh no, that that we we, we uh, 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 okay. Pre flip. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, sorry about this. Okay, we 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 paid the tax equity this amount. Okay, and then what we do is is we get the 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 total amount minus it's like a, a little bit of a cash flow waterfall. We get we get this amount. Okay, I did that wrong. So what we did is, is we have put it in. We have a, 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 a IRR to develop a sponsor. So what we did is 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 we we put in a negative cash flow. We we have this minus the negative of this. So this is we put in this and we get this back. Okay, and then we get our uh, 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 we get our IRR. Okay, and I'm sorry about my mistakes on that example. Okay, Shift Control P. That's the good news. Okay, we split this up, and this was some sort of weighted average between the seven and this. But then, uh, what happens if this thing, uh, instead of being a hundred, let's say this is eighty? Well, we still get. Oh, let's let's put it as ninety. That was too extreme. Okay, we still get. Oops. Oh no, they still get 7%, but we get lower than that. So we've taken on more risk because we kind of get what's left over. So let's put 95, then it's oh, then it's you know the this is higher than the 7, so so we're getting a higher, but then if we put 85, then we're down to 4%. IR. That's, I'm sorry, I kind of screwed up that example, but that's how a flip works. And the key thing behind making a flip is making a simple little tracking account. And now when we've, when I've discussed this with people, I try to make it all fancy and complicated. <sighs> but it, uh, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's maybe better to, to, to do it with a, a a simple case because then we can put our capacity factors in and then we can put our, our different uh, projections of income from a capacity factor and then for the tax investor you're going to compute their yield on an after-tax basis remember the tax investor is always 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 about after-tax not pre-tax Okay, and uh, uh, in in this example, I, I, I'm I'm just I I can't go through it anymore. But it, it, in this example, you can walk through, and I've got other videos on this too. But walk through how you start with the pre-tax IRR, and the trick is that one of the big tricks is during this. You know what I just did? I cheated a lot here by making it really really simple by giving no cash flow whatsoever to the uh, uh, to the investor to the tax investor after the flip but if you 
do it more carefully, you've got to figure out for that pre-flip cash flow how much the 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 if, if you've got some ratios, some some distribution after the the flip, you've got to be much more careful in 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 in, in figuring out for that very for this period when when we flip it around how much goes to the tax investor before the flip how much of this money that you get for that particular year or month or quarter that goes before and how much goes after so that's basically the yield based flip and i hope you understand why you'd make a yield based flip when you have production uncertainty and you could also go for uh, uh, further and make the use this thing called a a a a, a a pay go, which is 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 even more kind of crazy. In in M and A transactions, there's something called an earnout. I was having trouble finding that word. An earnout, where if the EBITDA is higher than the 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 target company gets more cash flow and. And if it's lower, they get lower cash flow. So there's a little bit of a risk adjustment. So the buyer in the in the merger has 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 less risk than than would other by otherwise be the case. Okay. Uh, so enough of that. I'm gonna stop here and call this part two. And now we're gonna move to part three which will be the financing. But let me stop here. So, and once we finish the, the, the financing, then we'll be, then I'll, I'll be finished with these, these kind of three part introduction to our, our tax equity.